So somebody mentioned today in the comments on one of my videos that they don't know how to create their own models and are asking me where I get my models. And so since I, d I create uh, easily 99.9% .9 of my models uh, that I would share sort of an intro, just a real quick intro of the various types of CAD. So basically, um, so that comes down to how do you learn the best tutorials all over YouTube or elsewhere. Generally, all these softwares have tutorials that they offer, which are also excellent and I imagine go very underutilized. So the manufacturers, you know, the software publishers tutorials and just YouTube tutorials. All right, then we have uh, two different types of CADs. We are actually two different types of images with vector versus raster. And this is, this makes a difference because, uh, well, it does. So if I go uh, paint, so this is, this is, uh, this is raster graphics in paint. So let's say I make a box or even more critical, make a circle. So if I zoom in on this, you can see all this pixelation. That's because it's a raster image. Whereas if I go into, for example, Rhino and I draw a circle. So now you can see it's a little bit, you know, it doesn't look perfect on the screen, but it's a vector image. So no matter how much you zoom in on it, it's it still looks right. So it's not creating pixels. It's not creating a grid of pixels like in paint. This is a grid of pixels. And I can color the pixels, uh, you know, according however I want. Right? And so I'm just... I'm just filling in all these little boxes. That is a raster graphic. So JPEG, GIF, bitmap. These are all raster graphics. And that's no good for CAD because it's not smooth lines. So in CAD, we use uh, vector graphics. And so basically a line has zero width. Whereas a line here has what two pixels width one two or four whatever it is from here to here um, but the vector graphics has no width uh, a point is just a point it has no width or depth or thickness I can zoom in and out and it looks the same no matter how far I go and so that is the basics of vector versus raster graphics. So all of our 3D CAD is going to be vector graphics. So then next you have NURBS versus MESH. And NURBS just means curve based and MESH means there are no curves. It's all any curves are simulated with short line segments. So I guess I'll go into Blender for that because Blender is a very MESH oriented program. So let's delete that. And this is the, I just installed the new version of Blender. And I don't use Blender very often. So it's going to take me a minute to uh, remember. So I guess I can go uh, Sphere. And I, this is, I, yes. Yeah, so no, no, what is uh, Space? No, double click. No, that's, uh, that's in Rhino. All right, I thought I was done with this video, and I was just putting, editing the pieces together, and I realized that my confusion with the new version of uh, Blender is that evidently it does also use NURBS. As I, as I was editing my video, I realized when I said, when I went to add NURBS, 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 like I did, didn't click to me that this is NURBS in Blender. So evidently, and maybe for a long time, but it uh, seems new to me that uh, Blender now it also does NURBS. So if I say add mesh is what I, as I look back at the video, what I wanted is a mesh sphere, UV sphere. Ah. <coughs> so that's my mesh UV sphere. But this is NURBS. That's why I couldn't see any mesh because it's actually a NURBS. Interesting. Uh, so like if I go add here, mesh curve surface, so under Blender, all the surfaces are NURBS. That's very interesting. 
that's new to me. Anyway, I'm going to insert this in the video, and uh, so the following the following segments were actually recorded before this, but I wanted to point out that uh, what I meant to do was a mesh sphere, and didn't even realize at the time I d I selected a nerve sphere, and so uh, evidently Blender now also does nerves, which is very cool. Glad to see it. Uh, should add a lot of of uh, flexibility and capability to an already very flexible capable software so anyway back to the original video um i don't remember modeling scope uh add object add um uh, Volume, surface, meatball. Uh, nerves, sphere. Okay, I don't know why they're calling this a surface. I'm calling it a solid. Whatever. So, right now I'm in um, object mode. You can see up here. If I hit tab, then I go into edit mode. And so interestingly this is a little bit different than it used to be so I can pick this I can pick this here and say G for grab there we go ah nice and I can change the shape of this and so this is all mesh and how can I show this as mesh um, if I go back out of edit mode to object mode there we go so now this is shown as a mesh so there are actually no curves on this these are all st straight lines and if you can tell but as you can see here these all these edges are straight and so this this is a mesh based CAD which does it is nice because I have the flexibility to uh, manipulate it pretty powerfully but not super uniformly and now I'm sort of stuck with this so it's not really parametric whereas if I go into SolidWorks okay and then I say uh, put a, uh, we'll do a, we'll make a sphere here too so I made a circle there and I make a line so I'm in sketch mode here and SolidWorks works in sketch mode um, so I'm in a sketch so I create that now I'm going to revolve that around this, and so now I have a sphere, a NURB sphere, versus Blender with the with the uh, mesh used to be a used to be a sphere, and if I go back into SolidWorks, so if I put this on um, edge mode visible. so there are none because there's no mesh right now so it's all based on this sketch so let's say I wanted this sketch to be okay radius 2.4 and I want to grow it so now see it's parametric I can grow it which is kinda neat and then let's say I just to show that this is curves based not mesh based Let's do a non-uniform scale. Select that guy. Uncheck uniform. Oops. And we'll say along the x direction, we're going to give it a two. All right. So now, yeah. So now you can see there. It's there are no. There's no mesh to be seen here. So if I go back to, I can go back to shaded with edges vi visible <coughs> so as you can see it's it's uh, uh actually so let's do this if I cut the front half away or even less of it let's do this just to be interesting so if I cut that away now you can now you can see some edges right so if I go back to show my edges 
select let's go hidden uh, hidden lines removed so now you can see again there's no mesh it's uh, it's defining this with actual curves so no matter how much I zoom in on this it's gonna stay looking curved now it looks a little bit jagged just because of the the computer dealing with the infinite curvature theoretically infinite curvature it's good I don't know it goes to like 10 or 20 decimal places or something crazy like that probably 10 ish but so that is uh, nerves based versus blender it's mesh based now we could take that a step further though if we go into Rhino Rhino can actually work in both so now SolidWorks I can bring in a mesh uh, but it's limited to what I can do with it and uh, Blender I can export from NURBS to mesh but Blender doesn't work with curvature somebody somebody correct me if I'm wrong uh, Rhino uh, is one of my favorite softwares it actually can work in both and I can go back and forth and even beyond that though it has this thing called sub D so let's do this uh, alright so this is a, it's what they call what the Rhino calls sub D and it's sort of a combination not really it's nerves so I can tab back and forth to show the base mesh or I can tab to toggle back to the curved and so again here though I can the nice thing about this it, like I said it's sort of a hybrid between um, sort of a hybrid between the two softwares alright so now I can or, uh, not a hybrid between the two softwares. It's a ho sort of a hybrid between NURBS and Mesh, but it's technically it's still NURBS, which is awesome. Uh, it gives you a ton of flexibility, but again, you don't have the uh, parametric ability. So, like for example, if I I can go back into SolidWorks and just entirely undo what I think various things that I did. So, like I can suppress the scale feature. And so now it's just this guy, and I can suppress this guy. So now it's just this guy, and I could unsuppress the scale feature. And so now it's this guy. I could, uh, I could. Um, oh, I need to unsuppress that. I could instead change this instead of 14 to 0.4, and so now it doesn't go all the way through. Let's put that on shaded. It's a little piggy bank slot type of deal. And I could technically, I could adjust this like this. So this is where a lot of SolidWorks can be pretty advantageous. Um, they all have their advantages, but SolidWorks, what SolidWorks can't do is this, which this is why I really like, I really like, uh, I really like, Rhino. You have so much flexibility on what you can do. So so there that was the difference between uh, uh mesh based mesh based geometry versus in SolidWorks NURBS based geometry versus uh Rhino with uh combination NURBS and mesh based and or you know either or 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 a combination of both and the other thing cool about Rhino is you can using the grasshopper tools and probably without the grasshopper tools grasshopper is a portion of it um, so if I go here and I go uh, where is oh grasshopper oops no it's grasshopper player uh, well, anyway, I don't know why that's, uh, anyway, I'm not going to go with the grasshopper right here, but, so that's nerves versus mesh. Okay, so surfaces versus solids. Um, so in SolidWorks, 
So this is technically a solid. So you can see here it's a solid bodies and surface bodies. There's one solid body and there are no surface bodies. And so the way SOLIDWORKS defines it, and there's probably a universal definition somewhere, but they probably tend to be a little bit different. But in general, in my understanding, so this is a solid right now, and the way SOLIDWORKS is, defines it. If I delete one of these faces, so it's a fully enclosed, so all the s various faces of this meet at the edges to create an enclosed, sometimes they call it watertight part. <clears throat> but if I delete a face, delete face, <laughs> for, the, for the fun of it, I'm going to delete this outside one. So now, this is now a surface. So you look here, and it says surface bodies, and one surface body, and no solid bodies. Right? Um, now I can close this back up and make it a solid again. Let me, in case that was confusing, let me not delete that outside face and uh, delete this guy. See, you can't really, actually, you can't really see that very well, so let me do this. So now, maybe you can see that this no longer, it's tricky to see it, so this no longer has, oops, this no longer has it's now this face is gone so it took a section view here All right but if I go to before this so now you can see it's solid so now I have one solid but if I delete that face now I have one surface so that's the difference. And uh, if I get rid of this section, what I can do is I can basically repair that. I can uh, go um, planar surface. I could do planar surface just because it's on a plane, but I don't have to do a planar surface. So I can go like from the what? Why did that happen? from that edge to that edge and then from this edge to this edge and now I have two surfaces I have this one and I have this one right so I can uh, just to demonstrate that I can uh, move this guy feature oh. So I could uh, move this guy without a copy. So these are my two surface bodies. But if I roll back to before that, when I go into surfaces and I go knit, I can knit that to that. And so now I have these options that say merge entities or create solid. So I'm going to say create solid. So now you can see again I have a solid body here and no surface bodies. Right? So that's the difference between solids and uh, surfaces. And, and in Blender you can basically use the same thing. So this right now is a solid. Right? Um, but I can break, oops, I can break that. If I go to edit mode and I say select these guys and delete them delete these vertices did that work? No, why didn't that work? I'm a little confused why that is not doing what I expected so this is a newer version of Blender that I'm not used to yet. Geez, did I even have a early? Oh, here we go. Let's do an older version of Blender. So that's Blender 4.0. This is Blender 3.5. Let's see if I know how to use Blender 3.5. Probably not. Let's put this back up 
here and uh, get rid of this guy and um, say modeling and how did I uh, <clears throat> I don't want to add a cube, I want to add a sphere. Here we go. Oops. That's interesting. So the funny thing is I don't really know how to use Blender 3.5 either. But this looks more like what I was expecting. Part of the tricky thing is... Uh, manipulating the viewport because all the buttons are different from software to software. Okay, so I have my sphere and if I go edit mode and then I just select these and I go delete and I go vertices. Aha, that's more what I was looking for. So now this is a surface. I don't know why it didn't let me do that in the new version, but as you can see I turned a solid into a surface. And similarly in Rhino um, so if I go, I think I, I think it's like what is. I don't know it's just what. So this is geometry sub D. Um. <coughs> sub D level zero. I don't know. Somewhere in this list, it probably says closed. Well, no, it's not gonna. Okay, so so it's gonna call in in Rhino. It calls it a B rep boundary representation. <coughs> rep. Um. So, for example, if I just do this. Um, sphere center radius. <coughs> Alright, so this is going to be NURBS. I can tell just by looking at it, I think. Yeah, so it's not sub D, so... Okay. So... Oh, that's solid tools. But then if I go mesh tools and do a surface uh, sphere, I mean. So now you can see the difference between a NURBS and a mesh in Rhino. Now, can I delete face? Delete faces. So, I'm not expert at Rhino either. But so now, so look, if I go what here, it's going to say valid mesh open double precision polygon mesh so notice it says open now if I undo what I did there and now I go what now it's going to say closed double precision polygon mesh interesting okay and um, then if I go I don't know where Grasshopper went. Well, I'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Type it in. Oops. Grasshopper. So now if I... Now I'm in Grasshopper here. I'm going to add a container called BREP. And I'm going to say set one B rep. Select that guy. So now I have this B rep. And let's move it over <coughs> just to make it easier to see. And unit X, unit X, and let's say 33. And negative. All right, so now I want it to 
go negative x 33 units there we go let's uh, make this number bigger whoa that's more than I might want it So now this isn't even really in Rhino, it's just sort of here in Grasshopper within Rhino. But then I could uh, bake this, put it back into Rhino. And so now if I make this invisible, so now I have the shape again in Rhino because I baked it out of Grasshopper. And if I say what, now it says... Render mesh, one mesh. Ah, interesting. So it's actually a mesh now. Uh, hmm. Closed surface. So SolidWorks would call that a solid closed surface. Which is funny though, because they do say here. Uh, surface tools, solid tools, sub D tools, mesh tools, but they're all sort of interrelated, except for, like I say, mesh is all just straight lines, and the NURBS based or curve based is all potentially curved lines, can be straight lines also, but has the potential to have actual curves of infinite curvature. Uh, surface versus solids, we did that. Ah, simple Boolean techniques. So, if I just move this guy to here. Boolean, this guy, Bo Mr. Bool, was it James Bool, I think, B-O-O-L-E? I don't know, it could be James, could be Frank, I don't know. Uh, Mr. Bool, Dr. Bool. He gets uh, credit for a lot of things. And we're calling this Boolean geometry. Because I am going to... Uh, so here if I go mesh boolean union it's going to combine these two so now it has created a nice buttocks <laughs> I'm just going to undo twice and so now they're individuals again control z is always undo or at least mostly um, but I wanted to do I wanted to do a boolean subtraction that's what I really wanted to do let's get rid of this guy and um, looks like if I, yeah, here we go. Some Boolean difference. So now you can see that I subtracted one from the other. And they call that a Boolean operation. It's basically about logic and adding and subtracting things. Or even I could do a, uh, a uh, common, what do they call it here? Mesh Boolean intersection. <coughs> ah. See that? So now you have a Boolean intersection of the two. And so this is this is actually mesh. And you're getting a little funky mesh. Real mesh modelers would be annoyed at that. Uh, it doesn't... I'm not good at it enough to care. I'm all about nerves, ba nerves based, curvature based, primarily SolidWorks at the time. But uh, my bread was with SolidWorks. But so if I go back to here, and then I copy this guy, or you know, instead of copying it, I'll just make a new shape. And I will actually let's do this. Let's do something a little different. So I'm going to revolve this, and I'm not going to merge them. So now I have these two funky shapes. Let's throw some color on them. Oops. All right. So let's uh, do a Boolean operation. In SolidWorks, it's called combine. And I can say add, subtract, or common. So I'm going to say subtract from this guy. I'm going to subtract this guy. 
There we go. So there again is a, a very simple Boolean operation, but it gives you, you can get some really cool geometry out of that. Now, again, keep in mind, this is still nerves based, so this is not mesh. So if I make these uh, transparent, you see it's all curves, it's all curves, no jagged lines. I mean, they're slightly jagged only because of the limitations of the hardware, but in the software, it thinks it's a curve. Everything is a curve. Right? And so that is the uh, some simple Boolean techniques. And with those and the basics, you can really make some cool stuff. Alright. And uh, pick a plane, draw a sketch. Extrude that. I can uh, I can revolve this by let's say 30 22 degrees out ah, wrong way let's say 77 degrees All right I can it's uh, it's all about putting sketches on things in SolidWorks Alt X to cut that. So that's basically how you create uh, geometry in SolidWorks. You can also do things like uh, shell. So I could say shell this guy on these surfaces. So now it made a shell of it. I could uh, do all kinds of things. I could go, I could do a 3D sketch, control 3, and uh, create a spline. in 3D space. All right, and then I could uh, put a plane on the end of here. Why didn't that work? Oh, because I'm still in the sketch. All right, so I select the point and the, and the curve and show plus makes me a plane there. And I could do like, uh, I could just do a circle Okay, and then I could go spline. All right, and I could even edit. Let's show the sketch and show the control points. And so I can update that. Very parametric. Nice thing about SolidWorks, it's very parametric. Now it doesn't always rebuild properly. Like if these two intersected, it probably would not rebuild properly. Let's see if I can break it that way. <clears throat> Where's that control point? If I can get them to intersect, I bet it breaks. Ha! -ha. So SolidWorks has that limitation. Other ones may be able to get away with it, but there's also workarounds. Um, and what else I can do with this is uh, instead of that guy, I could do like and then trim these guys out. And this may or may not work. It might be too complicated. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe one of these has to be on the curve. Huh. I don't know why it doesn't like that. So let's do this. Huh. Is it being grumpy? Wow, isn't that special? Because the other one worked. <laughs> okay. Well, find me that way. I'll just delete the whole feature. And then I'll go in here. And then I'll delete that. 
and then I'll do this. Right, and then I'll sweep. Oh, is that why? It was all because of that. Right? And I can even put a twist on it if I want. I can say profile twist uh, minimum is default. I could say specify twist value. Specify twist value and twist control. Let's say revolutions. Let's say six revolutions. See if that'll work. Yep, yep. So, as you can see, you can do some pretty neat things with that, and such as watch this. If I go All right, watch this. Oh, I didn't like that. Let's see though if I rebuild it, if it gets happier. For some reason, today, the sweep is not entirely cooperating. But that's okay. So I guess I kind of went a little beyond my intro to CAD here. <coughs> but this is actually, I think, pretty useful stuff. Except for this not uh, wanting to work. Huh. Doesn't like it, I don't think. Probably need that to be smaller sketch. Ah, it's not happy. So that let's go uh, let's select this guy ah. I'm just gonna do this let's try it again this guy sweep it by this guy all right there we go so like this one but watch what I can do watch this so now if I go into my options and twist specify twist value twist control revolutions what do I go 15 can I handle that easily how about 75 nice There you go. How's that for your phone cord? Uh, so anyway, pretty powerful stuff. Very parametric. So there is your basic intro to 3D CAD. Part 1, we'll call it. Uh, the differences between some programs. SolidWorks Blender. Ah, I should mention um so again we have um vector versus raster nerves versus mesh so like raster is mostly like paint um photoshop asterisk because i'm sure you could do some vector graphics in photoshop and 3d 
vector graphics, but uh, generally the output is raster images. Um, nerves versus mesh. Um, I believe AutoCAD is actually nerves based, uh, not nearly as parametric as some others. Uh, so let's see some 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 mesh based. So you have Blender, you have um, like I, I want to say like ZBrush, uh, 3ds Max. Um, basically, all these programs they make video games with tend to be mesh based and not nerves based. <clears throat> I'm sure there's plenty of reasons for that. If nothing else, the nerves is, uh, I believe, more challenging to com to, com to compute. So if you have a lot of information on the screen, that could really bog down your system. Whereas the mesh based, I think they can like bake it and do various trickery that I'm not expert at uh, to make it work much quicker. Um, in the graphics, in the GPU, the graphics processing unit, video card. Um, so let's see, other mesh based. Maya, I believe, is mesh based. Like I say, all these video game asset create and video game creating ones. Um, there's also Unreal Engine. And Unreal Engine, I'm not sure how much geometry you actually create in Unreal Engine. I think usually you just create it elsewhere and import it. I've toyed with it a little bit and all the models that I used I imported from like my SolidWorks files. Uh, it is very easy to add your 3D files to Unreal Engine. <coughs> and that's another free software that's extremely powerful and so I definitely recommend learning Blender at least a little bit because it's free and very powerful and Unreal Engine a little bit because it's free and very powerful. Even if you're not doing video games, just for like rendering, Unreal Engine, um, NURBS based, SolidWorks is NURBS based, Onshape, Fusion 360, you know, NX, um, what else? AutoCAD, I would say, is NURBS based, although it's not parametric like the others. And maybe it is by now. I stopped using AutoCAD at least 10 years ago, although I used it for probably 15 years. Um, um, <coughs> what's it called? SolidWorks has a clone of AutoCAD available. Uh, what's that called? Draft Site. That's a good program, but it used to be free, and now it's not free anymore, so I don't even use it. If I need to do any of that stuff, I'll just use Rhino. Most of my stuff is 3D, though. I don't generally use 2D much, or at least it's all 3D based. Um, and what other softwares... Are uh, I mean, I guess that's all that I'm thinking of. Oh, SketchUp. SketchUp is also mesh-based. Uh, and again, SketchUp is another one that works very differently from the rest. It's interesting how, you know, you have all these different mesh programs, and they work very differently. But they're mesh-based, and so they, in a way they work similarly. And similarly, similarly with nerves based, they all work very differently, yet share a lot of the same basics, which is their curve based. And uh, but to reiterate, about Rhino is actually uh, uses both uh, very powerfully. And uh, <coughs> I don't want to go too much into what you can do with Rhino, but let's just uh, if I go back into Grasshopper. Do I still have? Yes, I do still have this. And so I copied this guy to... Oh, I broke the B-Rep out. So I am going to set one B-Rep. Uh, none of those are B-Reps. All right, so let me do this one. And so now I have this copy. And if I made this, I could plug in multiple numbers here. I could plug in a list of numbers. Uh -huh. Okay, 
So see that? I made all these copies just by putting a list of numbers. Uh, there's just there's just so much you could do. I'm not even going to try to get into it. But, uh, I mean, I could, uh, let's do this. Oops. I just want to draw a curve. Curve tools. Ha. <laughs> okay. Well, that's not what I wanted. Aha. What's up, Godzilla? Can you hear Godzilla there in the background? And so, <coughs> if I do curve, curve array, here we go, and my geometry is this guy, and I need a curve container to select, set one curve, this guy, and so now I have this curve. And then my count, <laughs> and my count is let's say let's call it a 22. Ah, wrong, wrong hole. Um, <clears throat> but now we're not. Okay, so I am patterning that guy around this curve. So if I just move this guy. So here, I am going to disable this guy. Alright, because I want just this sketch pattern. Now, interestingly, Slightly confused. There we go. That's more like it. <coughs> so now, you, as you can see, I have patterned this along that curve. Oops. I could do things like uh, sub the tools and grab this point and modify it, and then they should all update. That wasn't a. That may have been too sig insignificant of a change. that <coughs> all right and I mean that there's so much that you can do here but anyway that's enough of that um, so I mean we're only scratching the surface on what you can do with these things <coughs> especially blender so Rhino has grasshopper blender has geometry nodes now so I learned blender before geometry nodes even existed in blender but so now Blender has much of the capabilities that Rhino does. So Rhino is not free software, but it's very affordable. If you want a professional paid software <coughs> that can pretty much make the most complex geometry, uh, Rhino is your tool. But if you're just doing product design, probably SolidWorks is your tool, but it's pretty expensive. Uh, Fusion 360 is a decent alternative, but because I'm used to SolidWorks, uh, I don't like the way Fusion 360 works in a couple of ways, and it's enough of a deal breaker for me to just stick with SolidWorks, although I already paid for SolidWorks, so if I had to buy SolidWorks again, I could possibly consider just going to Fusion. Onshape, I, I, try, I evaluated Onshape like five years ago, 
and it seems like very similar to SolidWorks, uh, but much but uh, very, much more limited as far as I could tell. It's like a dumbed down version of it. And it's also on the cloud, and I like my files on my local computer, and I can put them on the cloud if I want. But they basically force you to be on the cloud, so I'm not a big fan of that. But anyway, that I guess that's enough for this video. And I hope you uh, found it interesting and informative. And if you did, maybe you, uh, click the thumbs up and subscribe and maybe share with some of your like-minded friends. And uh, maybe hopefully it helps you to create some models for your own 3D printing. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one.